on the replay, go ahead and skip to the two minute mark. That's usually when I officially get started so that people have time to come in and join us. But for those of you who are already here, I have a small task for you if you'd like. Uh, in the video description below, I do have a free class that I'm teaching coming up where we go into bulk card making techniques. And if you want to sign up for that, you can get your free ticket below in the video description. And I'll talk about that later. So you might just want to open it in a new tab so you have it for later. Um, today we are going to be going through decluttering. So I'm going to declutter and purge with you. This is something I did with my VIP group. They really enjoyed it and I thought I'd bring it to my channel as well. How do you go about doing it? How to get rid of the guilty feeling that I spent good money on this and it's a perfectly good item. Um, how do I part with it? And some of the pros and cons of decluttering and purging. So I'm not here to preach about minimalism or what you should get rid of or not get rid of. My philosophy is if you feel like you're going to use it and you enjoy it, keep it. <laughs> It's no problem in recognizing that, hey, I liked this once or at one time and I don't anymore. Okay, so we are getting more people in. That's great. I'm going to start at the two minute mark, so another 30 seconds. So thank you everyone for having some patience. And we're going to get started with stamps and then we're going, I'm going to go through how I actually declutter and how I make the decisions and my thoughts behind making the decisions. So you can see behind my stamps here is a big pile of stuff that I order. And this is the reason why I'm doing a declutter, despite having decluttered actually not that long ago, um, because I have a very um, tight space. So I have my brand box, dream box, whatever you wanna call it. And this, once it exceeds this, I can't get more. <laughs> it's not possible, I don't have the space for it. So I have to really make conscious decisions about what comes into my craft room and what stays and what I'm using and all of that kind of stuff. So when I get a big order like this and two machines are actually here, um, usually that means that I have to make room for it somehow. Okay, because the box is fairly full, probably about 90%. All right, we're gonna get started. And just a reminder, if you weren't here at the very beginning of the video, I'm teaching a free class at the Cardmaker Success Summit coming up in August. And if you wanna sign up for that, you can grab your free ticket in the video description below. I'd appreciate it. Um, but you can click on that at the end of the video, I'll remind you. So when it comes to stamps, um, one of the things that I go through here, you can see all of, all of my stamps here fit in these two bins. They're the same size bins, they're fridge bins. And what I personally, what works for me is that I cannot exceed these two bins, okay? So when I go about purging and decluttering, I know these are pretty full. You can see here, there's not much room. There might be room for a stamp or two. I can't fit any more in here, so it's time to get rid of something. So how do I go about doing that? So first of all, I actually grab every single stamp set and I look at it. And I think to myself, do I have an idea for it? When's the last time I used it? Do I need it for some reason? Um, you know, there's never been anything that I've regretted purging. The only thing was my Distress Oxide inks. At one point I purged the colors I didn't think I needed and then I reinvested in them. So in 15 years of crafting and purging, that's only happened once and it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go through the stamps and kind of give my reasoning as to why I'm keeping them. I'm not gonna go through all of them obviously with you today, but I'm gonna go through a good chunk of them. Okay, so this one here, beautiful stamp, beautiful background. For me as a creator, it is retired. So usually retired stamps I generally don't keep, but this is one I love so much that I'm keeping it. This one here I think is such a super funny stamp. I've had it for years and I think I've used it two or three times in total. In, I probably got this in like 2015, 2014, something like that. So it's been nearly 10 years that I've owned this stamp. It's time to go, unfortunately. I don't use a lot of critters. If I've only used it two or three times in 10 years, there's no sense in hanging on to it, sadly. Now, normally my criteria for this would be that it's the same idea, critters I don't really use, but this is my only stamp that I tend to use for baby cards. So I am going to keep it for now. So you can see that I have a specific purpose in mind for a certain stamp. And maybe in the future, if I invest in more baby stamps, then that one would be one that I would let go of. And it's just super cute. Butterflies rarely leave my stash. They're my absolute favorite. So as I said, when you get a lot of joy 
out of your stamps or out of a certain type of image, then keep them. There's no sense in being a minimalist or anything like that as a crafter, okay? It just doesn't exist. This one here, another critter set. Another set I've had for a million and one years, um, and I'm unsure. So what I usually have is a pile of keep, a pile of unsure, and a pile of no. And I always keep a box under my desk that I can throw things into once I've made the decision. Because once I make the decision to let go of something, it doesn't come back in my room. This box gets taken straight out to my car when I'm done or put into a postage box to send to someone who can get more use out of it. All right, again, butterflies, love. This one here, very pretty stamp. Same thing, I feel like I'm getting rid of my creative smile stamps, which makes me sad, but it's true. I don't do critters. So admitting to knowing what you might like to look like and what you actually use is a really good stepping stone. I have these two sets here from scrapbook.com. These are really great because they're big, nice focal points, and I do like them both. Um, I like the fact that you have one more neutral, or you have Merry Christmas on both of them. Um, Happy Holidays, Believe in the Magic of Christmas. They're very nice stamps, and I use them all the time. So I'm going to keep these. I have a lot of stamps that, that go in the scent, in the insides of cards. So what I'm going to do is actually put them into its own pile, like this belongs to the inside of a card. And I'm going to check at the end to see if I have a lot of a certain type of card, like if I have six birthday stamps for insides of cards, there's no point in keeping them. Okay. Mm, I've never used these and I've had them for probably over five years, so they're gonna go. <laughs> I have a couple of sets that are in German and I keep these on hand because I live here and yeah, it just makes sense to me. This I bought last year, I never used it. It's a tag set and it comes with uh, sentiments that fit in the tag. It's sad, you know, it's really sad when you buy something and it's brand new and you've never used it and it's been over a year and you still haven't used it. And Christmas, I give myself a bit of leniency usually. Um, usually I give myself two seasons and if I still haven't used it, I won't, but I have to be realistic here. Like, am I going to actually make tags? And my answer is probably not. So unfortunately it's time to let go because you know, if there's no sense in feeling guilty about money you spent, the money's gone, it's gone. So I might as well pass it along to someone who's going to use it, right? And I'm sure someone will really enjoy that. Valentine's Day, I don't make cards for Valentine's Day, so it's gonna go. Uh, happy Holidays. Another, va another Christmas card, it's got a cute house on it. I know I own a few houses though already. Um, this is gonna be a mini bee. And that's how I go through my stamps. Is it a need? Is it a want? Have I used it? Do I have ideas for it? Am I gonna realistically use it in the future? If you'd like to, me to continue with the stamps, leave a comment below. If not, I'm gonna move on to the rest of my area and how I get going in the rest of my purging process. Okay, so I'll do a couple more and then you can let me know if you still wanna see me going through my stamps or if it's gonna get boring. <laughs> Okay, same with this one. This is a wedding stamp. Um, I think I only have one. So yeah, that's probably the important thing. Um, someone says they need to find a sentiment stamps in German. There's one set, Alta New Cells, and then um, Create a Smile stamps is the one I would recommend, or Alexandra Renke, um, both German companies, but they ship worldwide. This one here, this is a good example too. I wanna to talk about this very quickly. These are rainbow sentiments. So this goes with a very specific dye or a very specific image, okay? So how often do I make a rainbow card? How often would I send a rainbow themed card? This one I've never used. Another thing, I think I've used one of the sentiments. Um, it does have a few that don't, like I could use on its own, like stay strong, you light up my day, be the change let your light shine. I mean, there's enough here that I feel it's not entirely rainbow themed. So I'm going to keep this one for now, but probably my next purge round, if I haven't used it, I will probably, um, yeah, I'll probably let it go. Okay. So sometimes you might want to mark this. I have a very good memory, so I'm good to go. <laughs> um, there are some, here's another inside card. I'm going to put that off to the side. This here, so these are things too. This is a sentiment stamp where they're going up and down. This is from Heffy Doodle. 
I don't, sometimes when I'm making a card, I don't have a lot of room to fit a sentiment. And I like the fact that this one's so different and that it goes down instead of side to side. So this is one of the ones that always makes the cut, even though it might be retired, I'm not even sure, but because of that specific feature, okay? Paper hug, I love the sentiment behind that. Um, I've used it a few times. And I like that I'm not just a card, I'm a hug with a fold in it. I think that's really cute. So I think I'm gonna keep holding on. Now, when it comes to stamps that I absolutely love, that's also something that for me, I take a look at as well and say, okay, have I made a lot of cards with this already? Am I actually going to make more or am I gonna get bored of it, right? Is it time to make something new? So just because I love something also doesn't mean that it stays in my stash because I have such limited bin space. Okay, sympathy strips sentiments. I'm keeping this. My mama always needs sympathy cards from me. <laughs> I have one Mother's Day stamp, so again, keeping that one. This is one from Kathy Zilski. I love her stamps. I think they're so funny. This is all about introverts. So this is a very specific stamp. I would only send sentiments like this to certain people with a certain humor. It has things like, I came, I saw, I left early. Social distancing is my love language. You can always cancel with me. Um, and I think it's just so funny. I haven't used it yet, but I definitely knew, know quite a few people that, you know, would enjoy this. Love you. So this is one of the ones, one of the sets where I like it because it's not, um, it's not romantic love necessarily. Uh, you could send this easily to a friend because it's like, love you like Netflix, love you like craft supplies, love you like Spotify. And so it's a funny stamp. I like it. I enjoy it. It's not just for romantic love because I only need a certain amount of those sets because I only make my husband a card once a year. Okay, <laughs> probably once a year. Um... This one here comes with some sentiments and it, I think it coordinates with a birthday die, to be honest with you, that I purged last time. So this one's going to go. <laughs> Thank you. And then a whole bunch of sentiments to go with it. Mm, I can see that I haven't used this yet. I like the fact that it's a focal point, but it is very large. It would probably only work, I'm guessing, on a vertical card. So this is one of the ones I'm going to keep in mind for next time to purge. Sassy insides. I'm gonna put that on my insides of my cards pile and see what happens. It's another insides, another insides. This looks also more like insides. Happy birthday sentiments. You know, I don't have a lot of birthday sentiments, but I've owned this one for years and years and have never used it. So that, in effect, I'm just gonna purge it now, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go through the one bin and then I think these are mostly sentiments though. So I think we're good on sentiments and explaining why we keep them. So I'm gonna go into things like other stuff right now, which would be this one. Okay, so looks like background stamps here. Flower focus, matching stencils. I'm not gonna get rid of that. I like that a lot. Um, really small floral stamps. Never used them, but goodbye. <laughs> Weathered wood. I like stamps like this. I love background stamps. They're very versatile. What I have learned over the years though is I don't like clear stamps that are background stamps. They're too sticky and I find them annoying to peel off the backing. I don't know about you. Um, so I'm gonna toss that one because I do know that there are a lot of wood stamps that are out there in a background stamp. In fact, I think I have one um, that I could get as a cling instead. This one here I believe is also retired and I'm sadly gonna let it go even though I quite enjoy it. <sighs> Why did I do this? Okay, <laughs> um, we have here a swatching set. And a swatching set is, um, I don't swatch. I, have, I, have, I finally have to admit to myself that I don't swatch. As cool as these are, I don't swatch. I'm just gonna go with questions here quick. How often do I purge? I do this two to three times a year actually. Um, when I did it the first time, when I owned um, a hoarder's amount of craft supplies, uh, that took a very, very long time. And I swore to myself I would never get in that situation again where it took me weeks to purge my supplies. So now I keep up with it. It doesn't take long. And I'll show you kind of how I go about through everything. Stamps and dies take the longest, but um, I swore I would never do that again. So yeah. Mm -hmm. This one here is retired. I own a lot of flower stamps and I came out with my own sunflower stamps. So I don't need a sunflower stamp anymore. 
Um, this one is a sentimental keeper. So, so Susie Stamps, as many of you know, um, my friend So Susie, this is the first company I ever really worked for. Her and I became very good friends and she passed away, unfortunately. So I kept my favorites out of her collection and I will probably never get rid of them. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go in with flowers quick and then we'll go into some of the dyes. Why do I let go of retired sets? Um, that is specifically from a video creator perspective. Um, people don't like when I use retired supplies um, because uh, they can't get them if they wanna create the card that I'm creating. Um, that's one of the reasons. And at that point, yeah, it just, I have to really love it to keep it. I don't get rid of all retired sets, but usually there's something else out there that is very similar that will come into my stash at some point anyway. And it's just always good in my opinion to, yeah, because I have such limited space to just let go of things. Um, will you have more Justine Hovey original stamps too soon? Yes, I have a release coming in August and September. Things got pushed back a little bit. Um, because we needed to redo some of the products. I don't release anything that's not of high quality. So there were a couple of little design flaws we had to fix and then um, that will be out. Okay, this is a Christmas Village set. I love everything Christmas Village. I love everything Christmas Markets. I live in Germany, um, but I have my own set coming out soon. So I'm gonna get rid of this one um, because I have another one coming. <laughs> This one here, very cool. Um, this has like fill-in sentiments. And if I miss your question by any chance, um, ask again, and I'll be, I will go back through the chat later and, and answer them if I've missed your question. Uh, here we have mm, fill-in sentiments. Very cool. I have a couple of sets of these, one Christmas and one normal. And to be honest with you, I never use this. This is probably more for horizontal cards and I generally like to make vertical cards. So I'm gonna part with it. This I've had forever. It's a pine cone background set. And um, yeah, Andrea's asking if I will sell my stuff again. And the answer is yes. Um, and I love this. This is one of the ones that I love to use, but I've used it like 20, 30 times already. And people, yeah, I just, you know, I'm good. I'm good now. It's time to go. <laughs> Another insider stamp. This is another one of those stamps. I used this in my 12 days of Christmas last year, which meant I made 12 videos with just this one stamp set. So I'm good to go with this stamp set as well. I've used it enough. I'm very satisfied with the amount I've used it. It's time to make room for new cool Christmas stamps. Um, I really like this stencil combination one that's fun. This one retired, so it's going to go. Now I have a lot of flowers here. I have a whole pile of flowers here that I'm sitting on and um, we're gonna to have to go through those and see. There's probably some room to, to get rid of some. Another background stamp, stripes. I like to keep very neutral geometric things. Generally, another one, um, hexagons. Those can be used for any occasion, any card. They're versatile and I don't feel like I've used them so often. So yeah, flower stamps seem to multiply in your stash, Melinda, I agree. Um, I don't care much for alphabet stamps. Um, I find them difficult to line up. I have a video coming out on how to line them up and all sorts of tips and tricks, but I do find them tricky. So I only keep one or two sets in my stash, usually one that's uh, printed and one that's scripty, and then I'm good to go. Okay, sorry, I have my camera on forward facing. So if I'm not directly eye contacting in the camera, I, I apologize in advance. Um, text backgrounds. Um, I have one larger writing, one um, smaller writing and um, I'm gonna keep both of those. Uh, where can I get more insider stamps? Uh, most of mine are from Mama Elephant uh, and scrapbook.com. So those, you can check both of them. They're the scrapbook.com brand. Um, they have quite a few of them. One beer, if you just saw my masculine card video, I was talking about how masculine cards don't all have to be fishing in beer. But since I live in Germany, like a good portion of them should be beer. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep that one. A wedding one that involves coloring, but never used it in years. This mountain set I'm obsessed with. I use it all the time. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that one. Um, turnabout stamps. So turnabout stamps I'm a big fan of, but I usually keep the turnabout stamps that um, don't require you to be perfect in lining them up. 
some of them when you don't line them up properly like they don't look right and some of them when you don't line them up properly they just look like a collage and it looks really fun so these ones here are those ones I'm talking about. They're not the ones that need to be lined up exactly. So that's the reason why I keep those. They make for fun backgrounds. You can ink your colors, multiple backgrounds. Um, this one here, I ordered this and the detailing is too much for me. I'm not really a fan of it. Chris says, I found that I like to make certain types of cards. Love long fun critters and making scenes with them. I like to make backgrounds to use with large sentiments. Yeah, it's really great for um, to know what you truly actually make. And if you don't make cards very often, then I suggest uh, getting started with making things versus purging and buying more stuff, right? Okay, so now for the flowers. Hooey. I purged a lot of flowers in my last one, so I don't have too many here, but I have a few for sure. Okay, so let's get down here. I think I'm gonna end up making more of a mess purging than I am anything. I always like to keep a solid flower. So I'm gonna see how many of those that I have. This one is great for slim lines, so, or very long cards. These two, you can kind of see the, the stamped image here, are to me are like look like the same stamp. So I'm gonna get rid of the smaller one um, because I'm good to go. This one here, love this stamp. It's relatively new. I have the stem stencils, the dies, and the stamp. And this stamp is not made very well in the sense that this stamp is one piece and it doesn't fit in my Misty, in my normal size Misty. Um, so I'm going to hang on to it only because I want to try it in the Ulta New Stamping Wheel and see if it fits in that, which I don't think it will because I think it's eight inches. You know, I, it might be one I have to purge only because it's not very functional, unfortunately. Not sure why it was designed that way. Another kind of solid, this is leaves though versus flowers. So I'll probably keep both of those. And layering, I have one, two, three, four sets. I kind of think that that's an okay amount, right? Yeah, do you agree? <laughs> I'm gonna keep those. All right, so for those of you just joining in, just a quick reminder that the Card Maker Success Summit, a free card making event is coming up in August and I would love for you to grab a free ticket using my link below in the video description. I'm making bulk cards. The secrets to bulk card making that nobody tells you about is what my class is called. If you'd like to sign up, open up a new tab and then sign up when the video is over. I'd really appreciate to see you there. Okay, now the last ones are just a couple of sentiments here and then we're all done with our stamps. So stripes, always good to go. Diamonds, background stamps, love background stamps. I have the numbers for that alphabet set that I showed you earlier. We'll keep those for any sort of birthdays, any specific. I think it's important to have numbers in your stash just for very special birthdays, like 50th, 60th, 40th, whatever. So you can put that on there. This is a birthday set that has a lot of small sentiments for strips. I like to keep that one. Um, this one here, I got a lot of use out of it over the years. It's all sorts of happy birthday. This is Concord and Ninth. Um, it's a nice one, but I think it's time to go. This is another one of those fill in sets. It has a whole bunch of fill ins. I'm going to keep this one versus the other one. And then I have a mother's father's day. And I said before, I only have one, but it's not true. So I'm going to get rid of that one because it's retired as well. And that is it for the stamps. Okay. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. I'm going to go and put these back into categories later um, rather than right now, because that would be annoying. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly kind of clean them up here. Like I said, I am going to go through my insides later and just see if there's anything I have a lot of. Like if I have five Christmas ones, that makes no sense. And yeah, I've now made quite a bit of room. You can see here. Um, for stamp sets so I can get new stamp sets <laughs> and I always sell my my boxes in a mystery box so you just buy the whole box for a certain low price and that way I can get rid of everything all at one time versus trying to list everything individually because that's a lot of work so I'm gonna put those down sorry I feel like my chair is really noisy <laughs> dies I generally go through in the same fashion um, I'll go through a few dies right now, but I'm not going to go through the whole box. Um, and then we'll talk about kind of the rest. The rest is, is very easy to go through and it's a little bit more of a cleanup process than it is necessarily just a declutter. Okay. So I have some dies. 
underneath like where my camera is. So if it shakes for a quick second, my apologies. All right, so these are my Christmas ones, I believe, that I can see here. Oh, my YouTube counter is, is going. Someone subscribed. <laughs> so thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. Did you stop making noise? Oh, maybe it's just resetting itself. My apologies for the sounds. Okay, so I have my dies. These are from Amazon. These, uh, I just recently got them. They're very, um, they're sturdy. They come in great pockets and they're very affordable. I was really surprised because I had magnets from official stamp companies before and they were very expensive. So I'm very happy to have this here. Um, I have snowflakes. I realized last year that I'd purged all my snowflakes and didn't leave any in my stash. So yeah, <laughs> gonna keep those this year and not make that same mistake again. Would that thing be quiet? <laughs> It'll stop in just a second. I hope anyway. I have, so I have two snowflakes. One's larger than the other. One's more for embellishments. One's more of a focal point. Um, so that's fine to keep. I have this um, layering snowflake. So again, I'm kind of keeping an eye out now. If I have more snowflakes, it's probably gonna be something I'm going to purge eventually then. Um, layering dies. The number thing ticking in the background is my YouTube subscriber count. <laughs> um, so it goes up if someone subscribes to my channel. Yeah, it's just fun to have in the background. If someone chooses to subscribe, it will change. Um, layering dies. It's a love-hate relationship I have with these. I find they take a really long time. They're expensive, um, but they are beautiful once you put them together and you glue them. Um, so I have one, two three sets of flowers, four sets of flowers I see here. So one's really large. Um, and then these ones are kind of all as embellishments. So I'm only, I think I'm gonna keep the daisies and the large focal point um, rather than all of them. This one is brand new. I just got it last week, so I'm keeping it. <laughs> I don't purge that fast. Um, I only have one fall set. I am coming out with a fall set um, and, and yeah, so <laughs> um, I am coming out with one. So I'm going to hang on to this one, I think, until my release comes out and then it's probably something I'll purge, but I don't think I'm ever going to purge this one. I'm Canadian. It's a cool little maple leaf and it's very, very pretty. I absolutely love it. So yeah, I combine my die sets too. So it's a little harder to purge these ones. I have to actually take them out of the, um, the plastic and everything, but yeah. Um, Oh, these ones here. Okay, so these ones here create little mini albums and mini notebooks. Um, one of the things that I just purchased, you can see there, is the cinch. And that is so I can um, create my own mini albums uh, because I started scrapbooking again. And you might see why when I stand up in just a second to show you the rest of the box, you'll understand why I might be scrapbooking again. Um, so I think it's time to part with these. I only use these to create one little mini album and then I never use them again. So I'm gonna toss those. This is my one die I think I have that's um, interactive. And so I'm gonna keep this one for now. Um, I'm not 100% sure though if I'm gonna keep it in the future just because I don't do a lot of interactive cards. Mm. These hearts are really cute. I'm gonna keep those for now. This is my, again, my one wedding set. It's a little bride and groom. <laughs> um, butterflies. I love butterflies. I have a lot of butterflies though, and these are really small. Um, so I like the fact that I probably, to be honest with you, won't use the paintbrush in the future, um, but I like the little butterflies because I don't think I have any dyes like that yet, or still rather. Graduation isn't really a thing here um, that is highly celebrated. I think it's much more of an American thing. I didn't even find in Canada that it was very crazy highly celebrated unless it was like a sibling or a grandchild or something like that. So I think I'm gonna part with these. I don't think I need any graduation dies to be honest with you. I'll probably regret it, but then I can also cut it out of my Cricut if that's the case, okay? Um, trees and another snowflake. I'm gonna keep these, these are fun. Um, this stocking, I love this stocking. I used it quite a bit last year. The only thing this, this is for kind of for slimline. It was actually made for scrapbooking more so than card making. So just because of the general size of it, I am going to part with it. I feel like I used it enough and the size wasn't ideal for me. 
Um, this is a Tim Holtz set. Uh, I don't own a lot of Tim Holtz dies or stamps, uh, but this one I, I quite am a fan of. The only thing I'm not a fan of with um, these types of dies is that they cut all everything you need out of one set. And so I have to cut this out of like every color that I'm going to use. And I find that a bit weird. I'm gonna hang on to it one more season. And if I don't end up using it, it's gone. Okay, so I think that's probably good on the dye inspiration. Um, but how do I go about with the rest? And the rest of it is pretty easy. I would say the only other thing that takes a little bit of time is stencils. Um, but I just purged my stencils a couple weeks ago, so I don't really feel like there's anything in there I'm going to get rid of, but I just flip through them again, go through them. Am I going to use it? Do I have ideas? Have I overused it? Meaning I used it a lot and I'm done with it now. Um, have I never used it? You know, that kind of thing. You kind of get my mentality going about now. The harder thing to decide for me is which techniques to keep in my room. Um, and, and the reason why I say this and if I had a large craft room, I would keep all my techniques. I wouldn't have an issue with it whatsoever. But again, very limited space in my craft room. So let's take a look. I can't zoom out, I don't think, so I'm just gonna push my cart back. One sec, so I can stand up. All right. So we have here, oh, you can't see my face. One second, I'm just gonna adjust my camera here. Very quickly, it won't be long. There we go. Alrighty, so what we have here is we have, I have my drawers generally labeled by technique. And so I can quickly just look through and see, do, am I going to add to my stash? Um, so do I need to make room in the drawer? Or um, is it okay the way it is? And then am I going to use this technique in the future? Okay, so I have alcohol inks I have in two drawers. My goal eventually is going to be to use up my alcohol inks so everything fit in one drawer because I don't feel like it needs two. When I look at wax seals, for example, those are still fairly popular at the moment. Um, my stuff's fairly new, so I'm going to keep those. Embossing powders, they all fit in my drawer. So to me, there's no reason to necessarily purge certain colors at this point in time because they all fit in one drawer but I am noticing that I tend to stick to the same colors. So it could be something in the future that I do purge. Like I don't think I've ever used a yellow embossing powder or an orange embossing powder. Things. So those are the ones I'm probably going to keep with. Gel press are, is one of the ones, even though I just did a video in my VIP group, that I'm really considering at this point purging because I probably only take out the supplies once a year, if that, and I have to keep all my gel press stuff and I have to keep paints in stock and paints are the only thing that I use for like in my, in my craft room. So it's really something that I'm probably going to de-stash at some point. I'm just going to double check comments, questions, anything like that. Thank you everyone for the congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Embossing folders. This is my whole stash of embossing folders. So I don't really find the need to go through them at this point in time. Again, if I needed to make space, I don't use them a lot. It's probably something that could go, but it's not really necessary at this point in time. I'm just gonna check down here. Um, Watercoloring is another thing that I believe I'm not going to continue doing. So I'm probably going to get rid of all of those at some point. Okay, so sorry for moving the camera again. Um, is there anything else that I can talk about that you want to know about? I think I'll talk about inks and if there's anything else, feel free to pop it into the comments. So inks are another thing that I purged a long time ago. You can see here I have these organizers from Organize More and I used to own four of those organizers and I still had inks in my drawers. Um, so I had about, I don't know, 400 mini inks I had all of these full, it was insane. And the reason why I had so many is because I was working with all of these companies. So when I did a video for Concord and Ninth, I should use their inks. When I did a video for Catherine Pooler, I should use her inks. And eventually I just, you know what? A lot of the colors are the same. Um, I don't work for companies anymore. So there's no need to have every stamp or ink. Um, and so, yeah, it was just time I pared down to, to, to actually have three. 
I have Concord and Ninth under my table, which I don't use too often, but I do use it when I know I need coordinating cardstock because that's the coordinating cardstock ink that I own. Catherine Pooler I own for my general stamping and distress for techniques. Uh, paper I'm seeing here, yes. So my paper is actually in a, in a little paper unit on the other side of the room, but I'll talk a little bit about paper. I was really lucky to stumble across an organizer um, in our school that had 12 by 12 drawers and they're very thin. They're only about an inch deep. And once I have each color in there, so I have a red drawer, an orange drawer, a pink drawer, a green drawer. I have dark and light green, dark and light blue, um, and, and et cetera, et cetera, okay? When that drawer is full, I'm not allowed to buy cardstock anymore. <laughs> And lately, in all honesty, I'm using up my cardstock a lot with my Cricut, making Cricut projects. And I don't plan on restocking um, a lot of the colors. I plan on buying just one brand to make it easier on myself. Um, so I know that it works with my Cricut, it works with my card making, um, and uh, I don't get overwhelmed by the color choices and color matching and all of those things. So yeah. <laughs> You wish someone would do a comparison of ink colors across brands. Um, let's see, that's the thing is you need to find someone who owns all the brands. That's an issue. Um, and most majority of inks, like 90% of them are all manufactured by the same um, manufacturer and they have a choice. You can choose from the colors they own and you can have custom colors and the colors they own or they automatically produce are a lot cheaper than getting your own custom palette made. So it's very rare that a company chooses to go with a custom palette, which means that majority of inks, when it's a pink, it's a pink. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons why, again, I don't feel the point of having a whole bunch of brands. Um, what is under the glass mat? Looks like a nonstick sheet. Um, nothing is under my glass mat at the moment. It's just a shadow. I have all my surfaces in a drawer. So my craft mat, um, stencil mat, uh, works, make it station, like all of those things, they're in there. Um, so yeah, those are my surfaces. Embellishments, I don't need to go through. Um, I don't hardly have any. And yeah, so I think over the years, I just really learned to know what I love <laughs> and learn to accept the fact that I've made mistakes in my spending, but made the commitment to be smarter about my spending in the future. And I think once you do the big purge one time, you never want to do it again. <laughs> and you have to be really committed and in the mindset to do it. And then you're all good to go. Um, and then you can just do like I just did a half an hour and I'm good to go for like a good six months. And the only reason I do it so often again is because I have very limited space. So I hope that that's helpful for the purging. Um, don't forget about signing up for the free ticket to the Cardmaker Success Summit in the video description below. I would totally appreciate it. Again, making bulk cards, secrets to bulk card making that nobody tells you about is my topic. And um, it's full of like 30 plus presentations. It's all free. Everybody's making Christmas cards and holiday cards, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so I think that's it for the questions and the comments. Um, oh, do you have pattern paper? How do you store it? Um, I have a six by six box, little box like this. It's somewhere. <laughs> and um, I don't let it get filled past that point. I don't use a lot of pattern paper. I like to create my own pattern paper using stamps and things like that. Um, and I have one drawer of 12 by 12 pattern paper for when I'm doing any sort of like 3D projects or gifts or something for friends. I find it useful to have a drawer full of that. But again, it's just like a one inch stack. I don't let it get any more than that. So yeah. Um, will I be having another organization summit? Yes, it will be the same time next year, April 2024 will be the next summit. And it will be having a card making summit as well in September, but we're not ready to go into all of that yet. Okay, well, thanks so much everyone for joining. I think that's it. Do you have cards with envelopes? Um, I have a drawer for envelopes. They're just in rainbow order. Um, and then my handmade cards, which I also purge from time to time, are in this drawer. You can see it's actually full. It's time to purge it, um, AKA sends them out. Um, I send cards to my members. Um, I usually sit down and do that two to three times a year. I don't do it on like a weekly basis or anything. Um, but I, yeah, tend to go through them. Not every card needs to make it to a recipient. I'm good to go when it comes to throwing things away. <laughs> um, 
if I don't like it and if I don't think it's it's a decent amount, like it's my best work or it doesn't have to even be my best work, it just has to look good to me, of course. Um, so yeah, I don't mind purging my finished cards either. Um, where do you take your purged items? I sell them again in mystery boxes. Um, are you getting rid of a stamp set, but like a few of the sentiments, would you take them off and keep them and recycle the rest of the set? Personally, no. Uh, I would either get rid of the set or not get rid of the set because it takes the same amount of room anyway because it's on the carrier sheet. So um, no, I wouldn't pull apart stamp sets and separate them from each other. Okay. Foiling, would I rather have started with the Glimmer or the Mink? I own both. Um, it depends on your budget would be my question on that one or my answer on that one. So foiling with the mink is cheaper in the long run because it's laminating and toner ink versus investing in plates for the hot foil plate. But I do like the hot foil look better than the laminating one. Yeah. Um, mystery boxes. I put them on my Instagram stories when they're ready to go. I only sell to the European Union. Um, first of all, because uh, usually they never get a chance to buy mystery boxes compared to my American friends. And it just saves me on customs forms and shipping costs and all of that. All right. I think that's the end. I'm going to sign off now. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, it's not letting me go off. Sorry. There we go.